Okay, this week for our Bible discussion, we'll be in Genesis chapter 1. So, this week we'll be in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Let there be light. Last few weeks we've covered in the beginning, and then we covered God, Elohim, with the Creator, Barah, and then last week we covered the Spirit of God. We also, remember we covered uh, that the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the earth, and then again last week the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So that was verses 1 and 2, so this week we're going to move all the way to verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now it says, let there be light. It doesn't say God created light. It doesn't use the word he created light or that he made light. Just let, let there be light. So what is this light that God let there be there in the beginning? And we know it's not the sun or the stars or the moon because those are not created until the fourth day. So here we're just in the beginning of the first day. And he said, let there be light. So what is this light? Where do we go to find out? The computer? No. The internet? No. no. Where do we go? No. To the Bible. To the Bible. Right. So let's go to the Bible and find out what the Bible says regarding light. At least some of the things. We don't have time to cover it all. But this is chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened. So here, King Solomon, the writer of Ecclesiastes, tells us to remember your creator. So he's taking us back to in the beginning, back to the Genesis account. Uh, in the days of your youth, when the sun, the light, the moon, and the stars. So he has light listed as a fourth element different from the sun, the moon, and the stars. So like we just said, those aren't created till the fourth day, and so it is a totally different thing than the sun, the moon, or the stars, this light that is there in the beginning in creation. And we are to remember this light, to remember the creator who has created us. And that word for creator there in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, is the same word that's there, or same root of it, that's there in the beginning. God created that bara, not the root bar. And then in Psalms, King David's or King Solomon's father, King David, writing Psalm forty-three, verse three and four: "Send out your light and your truth; let them lead me." In Psalm one nineteen, one o verse one o five: "Your word is a lamp unto my feet." and a light onto my path. And in verse 130, the entrance of your words give light and give understanding unto the simple. So you see here in these verses in the Psalms that the light, and he says, send out your light, right? So again, it's like, let it be, send it out, your light and your truth. So light associated with truth and that they are used to lead us and then Going into that, the other Psalm, 119, that leading us into paths, the light being associated and used interchangeably with the Word. Right? So God's Word, and we saw the Word. We looked at some verses regarding the Word in the Bible uh, last week, two, a couple weeks ago, uh, in relation to Elohim. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so here, word, interchangeable with light, and giving us, uh, so twice, word used there, and giving us light, and giving us understanding, understanding on which way to go, on our path, on our direction, to be led by God's word. God's word leading us, and using God's light to lead us. Psalm 160, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So light now here being used in conjunction with the glory of the Lord. So this light is the glory 
of the Lord. And in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was as the light. He had rays coming out of his hands and there was the hiding of his power. Very interesting verse. Okay, and so his glory, so again, as we just saw from, from um, uh, that other text in Isaiah, his glory, God's glory, and so here glory associated with light. So the glory covering the heavens, his brightness as that light, his glory, his brightness, that light. And also these rays, rays of light coming out of his hands, as if there's like holes in his hands and there's light emanating out. And that light emanating out of those holes or out of his hands is where he hides his power. Very interesting. So something powerful coming out of his hands like light, like rays coming out from the holes in his hands. And in Psalm 27, verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And so light now being associated interchangeably with salvation. And that word for salvation there in the Hebrew is Yeshua. Or the root of it, anyway. My light, my salvation. So uh, I think it's Yeshua T, but, uh, but salvation, Yeshua, is this light. Saves out, gives us salvation. And in Isaiah 42, verse 1, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. And verse 6, I the Lord have called you in righteousness, and will hold your hand, and will keep you, and give you as a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. So here we're seeing this light being personified as you, right? And so uh, there in verse 6 there, I the Lord, right? So that's one individual, I the Lord, you would have hey there, I the Lord have called you, right? There's going to be two different individuals, right? And the verse above that, he will bring, so he, again, he, this light, he, and I will put my spirit upon him. So we have I the Lord, we have my spirit, and upon him, or upon you, right? Called you, and that he is a light to the Gentiles and a covenant to the people. And he's referred to as my servant, behold, my servant. This is Isaiah 42, but Isaiah 50, uh, 49, a few chapters later, and uh, rather, I'm sorry, uh, Isaiah uh, 52, Isaiah 52 and 53, it refers to this servant uh, as God's suffering servant who who's, has no comeliness that we should desire him. And uh, it goes through some very, very graphic depictions there in uh, the end of Isaiah 52 and 53 regarding this servant that would come and would suffer. And so here he is, this light that is this servant and that is called by the Lord, that God calls him and his spirit upon him, and he's called forth to go forth as this light. So with those texts scattered from all throughout the various parts of the Bible, from Genesis and, and uh, the Psalms and Ecclesiastes and Solomon, David and Isaiah and Habakkuk and various different writers, who is or what is this light? What, who is this light? So let's look at the cl clues that we've seen so far in just those texts. He was there in the beginning. He is to remind us of the creator. He is the truth, the way, the truth, the life. He is the word. He is the glory of God. He has power shining out of his hands like rays of light. He is God's salvation. Yeshua, and he is a light or a covenant to the people, right? The people there probably reference a covenant to the people, the Jewish people, and a light to the Gentiles. So a covenant to the Jewish people and a light to the Gentiles. He is a light to the Jews and Gentiles. So who do you think that is? Who is this light? Yeshua, Yeshua right? Yeshua. Right? 
But we have confirmation of that in some more Bible texts. No one else. No one could fit all of those things, right? Nothing else could fit all of those things. It wasn't created there in the beginning, but let there be in the creation. Came forth, sent forth at the time of the creation to create, to bara, to bar, to create, the sun creating. John chapter 8, verse 12. Yeshua spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And John chapter 1, verse 4, 9, and, uh, 5 and 9. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness. That was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. So in these two chapters, and we're going to see it in another chapter, uh, in John chapter 8 and chapter 1, this light is being uh, shown in contrast to darkness. The light and darkness. And we're going to see that again a little bit more. we we'll continue on, but I want to point that out here. So Yeshua plainly says that he is the light of the world. And that we can follow him. And be led by him. Path, he's our light to our path. He's our light, leads us in the way. He will... Uh, guide and direct us to follow him and show us, give us understanding where to follow, that he is the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, that light among us. And in him was life, and that life is the light of all men. He lights to all men, that every man in the world, that the God's spirit comes upon all to bring conviction to all and offer to lead them in the way of salvation. In Revelation, chapter 21, verse 23, the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. All right, so Revelation kind of culminating, pulling a lot of those other texts together, the glory of God, right, the sun or the moon, different than the sun or the moon, and that he is the Lamb and that he is the light. He is our light and will be for eternity, lighting up the new Jerusalem. In John chapter 12, verse 36, while you have light, believe in the light that you may be children of light. And in Matthew 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world. Now, I thought we just read where Yeshua said, that he is the light of the world. And now here in Matthew chapter 5, he's saying that you are the light of the world. Did he forget what he said there in John? Or how that would happen there? What, is he mistaken in one or the other? Which one's right? Is the record in Matthew right or John right? Which is it? Is he the light of the world or are you the light of the world? We are the reflection like the moon, right? The moon has absolutely no light. Right? On your next trip to the moon, go around to the other side and look, and it'll be a little dark over there, right? <laughs> and so uh, the dark side, there's no light emanating from the moon itself. It has absolutely no light of its own. So all the light that we get is a reflected light. And it's amazing, if you've ever gone camping out in the woods, not where there's you know, street lights and all this, uh, house lights, and, but uh, out there, just on a full moon, when my eyes were better and I was younger, I used to be able to read a book out under the moonlight on a full moon. It can be so bright, and it's all only reflected light from the sun. And the same like us. We have no light in and of ourselves. We have nothing. We are nothing. There's no good within us. You're not good. I'm not good. I have nothing. There's nothing to give. We have nothing to offer. We are nothing. Klum. Nothing. Nada. Nothing. We have no light. All we can do is allow God to reflect out of us, to reflect off of us, to allow him to fill us and shine forth out of us. That's the only thing that we can do. Like the moon, just be there and let God's light. And in that sense, we are the lights of the world. As, as we allow Yeshua to shine off of us, shine in us. As we allow him to empty us of self, because otherwise we just absorb the light. We're like a dark hole. 
And we just take, 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 right, from everybody else and from God, take all the attention, take all the thoughts, it's all about us, we think everything's about us, we're so greedy and selfish in and of ourselves, we just want about ourselves. That's how we're born. Right? No concern for mom or dad sleeping, I want to be fed, I want to be changed, right, wake, wake up, right? It's all about self-preservation that we are in our natural carnal state. But as we allow God's light to come in and remove and convict us and shine, reveal sin, and remove that, and confess that, and allow ourselves to be crucified in him, and allow him to fill us with his light, and become followers of the light, become children of the light. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called sons and daughters of God, children of God. Doesn't get any better than that. Become children of the light and allow his light to shine out of us through his spirit. Allow him to fill us with his spirit and let the spirit shine forth out of us. And in John chapter 3, 19 through 21, this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be manifested, that they are wrought in God. So here again, this contrast of light and darkness. And when we're in darkness, again, in our natural state, we have no desire for God. We're, we're hate, we hate him, and we hate the light, we're born with enmity towards God, hatred, resistance towards God. That's our natural state. It's a miracle that God leads us because that light shines upon all. And if we allow it to wake us up and it, it casts condemnation on us, it shows us that we're wrong. And if we surrender that, surrender that we are wrong, acknowledge that we are wrong, acknowledge in need of him, then that light begins to shine more and more and he's able to remove that darkness from us and break that barrier of resistance and hatred towards God. That's why it takes a miracle and a conscious choice to want to pray and read the Bible and to follow God. When I say pray, I don't mean just praying for ourselves, right? Because we have very selfish prayers as well. But to pray for others and to care for others and to minister to others and allow God's Spirit to change us and transform us into God's image. Retrans transforming us back into the image that he originally created for us to be in. It takes a miracle of God, a change of heart to giving us a, a longing to be with God. It's so, you know, it can be so selfish to even be following God, right? Following him so that we can go to heaven, so I can go to heaven, right? So that I can have, so that he hears my prayers. Oh God, heal me and help me and do this for me and all for me, it can all be me. Even confessing our sins can be selfish. I had a few weeks ago, uh, after owning Shabbat, I, I took the garbage and I put it in the trunk of the van and I went home and I forgot about it. And, uh, <laughs> and that week I didn't think much of it, it didn't, it didn't smell, I didn't notice it at all, I drove the van around a couple of times. And then the, the, the following week, um, I got in the van and Something didn't smell right, but I was running late and I just opened the windows and, 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 and tried to ignore it and uh, there must be something there. And then the next time, a few days later, I was in the van again and uh, I thought, something was not right. I'm going to have to go look, something is spoiling in here, something leaked in the carpet or something. I'm going to have to take this and clean this out. I don't know what this is. I'm still so stubborn. <laughs> And then again, it was another few days, it was just this week. So it's like three weeks later, right? So it was just this week. <laughs> and I decided to look in the trunk of the van. Oh, the garbage is there. That's what that is. <laughs> so now, did I do anything noble? Did I do anything great? Did I do anything unselfish and godly by taking that garbage bag out of the trunk of the van and throwing it into the garbage? No, right? That was just smart. Right? That was for my own benefit, right? So confessing our sins to allow God to take the garbage from us is not a great thing that we should be rewarded. Oh, I am so, I'm so godly, I'm in heaven because 
I confessed my sins. Well, that's no big deal. <laughs> You know, that's not, you know, that's not, we don't get any credit for anything. We're nothing like the moon. We get, no, we have no credit for anything. You know, it, by God's grace, we, he convicts us and we surrender and allow him to take our sins away for our own benefit, to be freed, allow him to fill us with our Holy Spirit, to change our minds, change our hearts, make us smell better, right? and to live better, and to live godly for him. We get no credit for any of that. To God be all the honor and glory. He's the one who does all the work. His light shining. Otherwise, we stay in darkness. We see so many of the evil things are done in darkness, done in cloaked, done in hidden things. Right? Uh, uh, nightclubs and drinking and prostitution rings. Dark places, dark things, dark in the night, not open, hidden away. Burglars dressed in black so they're not seen, right? And even others now, dressed in black and all in black and black. Darkness. Not the color itself, but just the darkness of it. To hide. We're trying to hide our evil deeds. Because we know ourselves, because that light is shining and we're under conviction as well. And so we try and drown it out with drugs or noise or sound and Activity and workaholism and excuses and lies and self-deception. Because that conviction is condemning us and showing us we need a Savior. We need Him. We need to come to Him. Come to Him and accept His hands with holes in His hands. With the light and the power of His death in our behalf. His salvation paid for us his outstretched hands. As he came to, to Thomas, put your hands, you put your finger in my hands, the holes in my hands and in my side, if you need to believe. Holes are still there. He's kept those holes because that's where the hiding of his power is in his sacrifice for us, that the lamb is the light thereof. The lamb sacrificed from the foundation of the world for our behalf where he unselfishly did that for us. And as we allow him to transform us and make us children of light so that we can shine in the darkness, so that we can help other people come out of the darkness as well, so we can come and storm the gates of hell to deliver those that are held captive there, liberate them from the addictions and the habits and the, and the sins and the dark thoughts and the evil thoughts and the anger and the bitterness and the rage and the wrath and the unforgiveness set us free. Thoughts of doing harm to others and self-pity and being set free from all the dark, depressive, heavy, weighted thoughts and let them set us free in his light, in his glory. So that, as it says there, that his deeds, as we come to the truth, come to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they were wrought in God. That our deeds are not our own, that God wrought them through us. And we want that to be seen, we want God to be glorified, that his glory shine in the earth. Back to Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God said, let there be light. There was light. God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So light, and darkness, right there from the creation. And like we saw in all those other texts. And so here we're seeing, right, in the very first three verses of the Bible, God, Elohim, created the sun, Bar, or the root of Barah, son of God, creating the spirit of God. Elohim again, verse 3, Elohim again, this plural God, this God family. And then the light, which was there from the very beginning, even not here, not created, but coexistent from, the, from eternity, thought it not robbery to be equal with God from all eternity, the light, the sun, 
not the sun in the sky sun, but the Son of God. The light of God, the Lamb, the truth, the Word. Right there in the beginning. Right from the beginning. Right there. So important for us to understand this foundational text. This is the beginning of the book. This is the beginning of the Bible. We miss these things and we jump over these things. Some people think they're studying the Torah because they went through six chapters in one week. 2,000 years in one week. Oh, we're studying the Torah. <laughs> that's not studying, that's flying, right? That's like, like studying your lawn in an airplane, right? Checking out the weeds and the plants. I'm checking out my tomato plants are doing from an airplane. It's just flying over. I have to understand because this is the foundation. This lays the groundwork for everything else. If we don't see the God family here, we don't understand them all throughout the rest of the scriptures. That's why some people teach as if there was nothing but this horrible old God there for 4,000 years who didn't know what he was doing, who, who was just mean and, 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 and dictatorial and, and harsh and laws and cruelty and judgment, uncaring. Fortunately, eventually he had a nice son who comes along for the last one-third of Earth's history who's very nice and, 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 and sociable and forgiving. And then he sends his spirit to help us out. The last part of Earth's history. That's basically what's being taught in a lot of circles. Maybe not so blatantly, but that Yeshua doesn't come along till Matthew. And the Holy Spirit doesn't come along till Acts. But they're right there from the very beginning. And so we need to see them all throughout, as we just did in Genesis and in Ecclesiastes and in Psalms and in Habakkuk and in Isaiah and in Matthew and in John and in Revelation, all throughout. The light is there all throughout, an everlasting gospel. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it's right there from the beginning so that we don't miss that there is this God, this unity God, this Elohim, this plural God, right there always has been. So the Messiah is right there from the beginning, the Lamb slain from the foundation. He's there from the beginning as the light, as the salvation, from the very beginning, shining forth. And the Spirit of God has been there right from the very beginning. God has been there, he's consistent all throughout. In all his ways, and rightly understood that way, then everything comes into harmony together. And we view God and his laws totally differently. We view God and his judgments totally differently. And we see they've all been working together all the same all throughout history, since the beginning of time. And then as we view that and view God that way, that's how it affects us. Because how we view God, we will be changed into that image. And so if we view him that for 4,000 years he was dictatorial and then out of change because he made a mistake and didn't know what he was doing and he needed some more help and his son comes along and helps him out, if we have that kind of view, then we will also have an all-over-the-place concept in our life, not a help, consistent. And we will view things as old and done away with and don't need those books or those verses. They're not as strong, they're not as important, they're not as helpful. It totally changes our whole picture of the Bible and thus of God. And then it changes how we live. When we have this view, he's there from the beginning. He's consistent. He's loving. He's there to shed light. He's there to help us. He's there to give us salvation and truth and all these things. And that's what's lived out of our lives as well, making us children of the light into his image, back to how he originally designed it and desires for us. So crucial, so important for us to understand these Verses, and of course, everything that comes out of it. But if we don't start off right, we're not going to end up right. Yeah. Right? You know, you can send a rocket and you can just be, you know, just a half a millisecond off in its direction and it'll miss the moon or whatever by wide, wide, yeah, light years. You know? So if we don't start off right, we won't end right. We need to start off right, understanding God, seeing God, seeing them all there together, working in our behalf and yet still is one God, Elohim, one God, all working together, one family, working together from all eternity in our behalf, out of love for all of us, in creating us for the great purposes they have planned for us. And so as we look over this list again of how light is used, at least in a few places, 
uh, in, the, in reference to this, in reference to God, in the Word of God, how does that apply to us? God wants us to remember Him as the Creator. There's huge attempts and have been for the last, what, uh, generation or so, a few generations of trying to get us away from God as the Creator, to forget the Creator, to forget Him as the Creator. And again, we covered that. We covered it. If you miss those other verses, when we did verse 1 and verse 2, or those other three messages we already done, you can see them on shalomadventure.com. See Him, that He is the Creator. We didn't evolve from that, some muck out of the mud. That we need to remember Him as Creator. And we'll get more into that as we continue in Genesis and more of the creation account. And how crucial that is to understand and, and be that we are created by Him. Not just evolved out of nothing. That deeply affects our psyche and how we live and how we treat others. And where we believe we're going. So remember Him as the Creator. And so if you have forgotten Him as the Creator, and again, we'll get more into that in future sermons. But if you've forgotten him as creator, then in a moment when we pray, you can ask God to imprint upon you the remembrance of him as your creator and to recreate in you a clean heart. That he is truth, that there is truth, that God is truth and he has truth and his word is truth. And he can lead us in truth. And if there's truth, there's also error, there's also darkness, there's also falsehoods. We need to understand his truth. Lord, lead us. We can pray in a moment if that applies to you. You want to be led in God's truth. You want it to direct your path, to give you light and direction. If you're in the midst of a decision, needing guidance, and in his word, in a moment when we pray, you can ask God, God, show me your truth. Open up your truth more and more to me. Help me understand your word more and more. I want to be fed, led by you. I want to walk in your way. I want to follow you. Third, that he is the word. If you've been resistant to reading the word, and again, naturally, that's how we are. We need to be transformed and born anew every day. Might have loved God's word before, but now it's become old. You fall asleep, you put it off, don't want to. We need to be re reunited, reignited with his word on a daily basis. If you've been putting off reading his word, and when we pray, confess that, accept God's forgiveness, the cleansing through his sacrifice, and ask him to fill you with his word, the living word. He is the glory of God, and he wants to shine that glory out of us. And if you're willing to allow him to do that, to give him all the honor, to give him glory, to give him praise in your life, then we can ask him to do that. In power shining out of his hands. Come to Yeshua. Accept his death in your behalf. If you haven't accepted Yeshua as your Messiah, you haven't accepted him yet for forgiveness of sins. If you haven't accepted him as your Messiah, in the moment when we pray, you can confess that and accept him. Accept his death, accept his sacrifice, accept his nailing, being nailed, being pierced for you. And your sins removed and buried away. That's where the hiding of his power is. That's where the power is. that he is your salvation, allow, allow him to save you from the sins. Not only from the condemnation of the sins, not only from the punishment of the sins, allow him to save you from the power of the sin, that you can be victorious over sin, set free from the shackles and bondage of sin, and walk in newness of life. To walk in the light, walk in his light and follow him, being set free by him. So if you're needing his salvation, maybe there's a specific sin in your life. Maybe some area, maybe just one area. If he's been convicting you, he's been shining his light on that area, bringing that to mind. Some area from his word that you know you're, you're, you're doing something that you know is not right. Confess it, allow him to forgive you, allow him to change you. Some area you know you should be doing and you're not doing. Confess it, allow him to forgive you, and allow him to change you and empower you to walk in that light, and to do right. To be a light to the Jews and to the Gentiles. God has called us to be a light to the world. I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of God unto the Jew first and also to the Greek. 
calls us to be light to the world. Those who follow him have the light, and he makes us light to the world. If you've been walking in the, with the Lord, but just enjoying the fellowship with fellow believers, and that's so fun, and that's so nice, you know, coming together and talking together and praying for one another and reading God's word together, that can be so nice. But we have to remember we have a mission and a calling. We need to be lights to the world as well. And if God hasn't used you yet to, to minister to someone else, if your prayers are not for other people at times as well, if you're not allowing God's Holy Spirit to give you gifts and talents to work in you and out of you, to minister his word, whether verbally and talking and sh or sharing or giving a card or a pamphlet or uh, directing them to the webpage or shalomadventure.com or something, directing them to the light, or living it out, sharing a loaf of bread or a helping hand or a smile, in some way allowing God's light to shine forth out of you. You haven't been concerned for neighbors, you don't know their names, people at work, people at school, people you come in contact with. You haven't been praying for their salvation. In a moment we pray, you can confess that selfish carnal life that we can live even as believers. Allow God to fill us with his mind, his heart, that is concerned for others. Right? If we're going to be lights like he is light, then we will have a concern for others. Where he left the glories of heaven and he left his friends in fellowship in heaven, receiving the adoration of angels to come here to help us. And God is calling us to minister to this dark and dying world that doesn't know him. And it's getting darker all the time. I just read that only 61% of people in this country <laughs> profess to believe in God. That is way down than just 20 years ago, 30 years ago. 61%. And we know out of that 61%, a lot of people will check that box and, you know, and that's about it. That's as far as it goes. But we have a great mission field right here, but also in other parts of the world. God can use us, social media, whatever it takes, get the word out, share the light, however you can. And to be separated from darkness. Again, if there's some area you're still living in darkness, still living in the world, come out of the darkness, come out of Babylon, and walk fully and completely in his light and only in his light. Not one day a week, not sometimes, but all the time, walking towards the light, in the light, allowing him to continually cleanse us and liberate us from darkness. Dark feelings, dark thoughts, negative thoughts, evil thoughts, put-downs, jealousies, envies, greed, covetousness, dissatisfaction, any dark thoughts, surrender them all to the Lord. Let him forgive you and cleanse you. Pride, surrender it all, and walk in his light. So if any of those areas apply to you, let's pray and let God do his marvelous work in our lives. Our Lord and our God, ruler of all things, creator of all things, from eternity, thank you for your great love for us. Thank you for coming forth and sending forth your light. Thank you, Yeshua, for coming into this world. Thank you for creating this world. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for not leaving us. Thank you for sending your spirit upon us. Thank you for showing us right from wrong. Thank you for giving us your word. Continue to lead us in your word and enlighten our minds. Continue to bring conviction to our hearts and minds. Show us right from wrong. Show us truth from error. Show us light from darkness. Lead us in your paths. Lead us to you. Thank you, Yeshua, for dying for us. Cleanse us and take all the sins. Take them out of us. Empty us. Remove everything from us. Remove self from us. Crucify us. And let the power come forth from your hands, the rays of light come forth from your hands and shine into our hearts and minds and revive us 
and make all things new and live your life, your life and your light out of us. Make us your children and walk us in your ways. Shine off of us. And when people see us, may they not see us. May they not hear us, but may they see you. In Yeshua's holy name, amen.